got your Bibles, we're going to start a whole new series this day. I wasn't going to do it. I was going to try to do those things where we're all traditional and we do a Mother's Day thing and a Mother's Day sermon and all of that. But hey, y'all know how good you are. So y'all tell us on a regular basis. So, you know, I mean, y'all understand. So you don't need me to tell me how good you are. Doesn't, don't need me. But I, I did put a woman in this, in this uh, sermon. So, you know, uh, I tried to do a little bit of all, but God began to deal with me. You know, we're doing this. I, 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 talk, I talk to God a lot because on Thursday nights we're doing this finishing faith thing. And then God began to move on me. And so this series is called Faith for the Miraculous. And so, you know, God said, everybody on the same page by the time y'all get through. And so I said, okay, so hang on, because let me tell you something, as this builds, as our mindsets begin to change, as we begin to uh, change the way we think, all of a sudden stuff's gonna start happening. So expect things to begin to happen in your life. That's where we've gotta start, expect the miraculous in your life. One of the most powerful things about the human race is our ability to believe. The issue is not the ability to believe though, but in right, Believing. The word states that each person is given a measure of faith. Romans 12 and 3. The problem is not in the measure of faith, but what or who we are putting our faith in. God did not promise days without pain, laughter without sorrow, or sun without rain. But He did promise strength for the day, comfort for the tears, and light for the way. If God brings you to it, He will bring you through it. It's that simple. So let's turn to Mark, the 11th chapter. Now let me do a little uh, field work here, so to speak. Before this, Jesus was hungry, came to a fig tree that was barren, cursed the fig tree, and walked away. Next day they come along, fig tree's dead. Peter makes mention of this, draws his attention to the fig tree that died when he cursed it. This is where that starts. Mark the 22nd verse says, And Jesus answering saith unto them, Have faith in God. Pretty simple, actually. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Faith for the miraculous. The question is not whether God can do it. We all believe that God can. The issue is, will He? God can, but will God? It's another matter. We have allowed our lives to become one that is I talked about it earlier where we've had people say, this is God, when it really wasn't. We've had people teach us that it's how we dress makes us godly or not. Whether we cut our hair, whether we have a tattoo, whether we wear shorts, the list can go on and on. Whether you wear makeup, I'll be honest with you, if the bar needs paint, paint it. If it doesn't, don't. It's that simple. All right? I mean, it's up to you. I mean, it really is. It's not a bad... You know what? It's not a God issue. I'll be real honest with you. You know, we talk about a soulmate. We talk about, is this the will of God for my life? Or is that the will of God for my life? Let me tell you something. God does not have to live with the person you're going to marry. So choose wisely. All right? Because let me tell you something. Marriage is tough. It just is. But can I tell you, and this is going to stretch some of you, but God is not up there going, oh, don't marry that one, don't marry that one, don't marry Just one, just one. I've only got one. Just one. That's all I've got for you. Just one. Let me tell you something. 
Back that up by the Word of God for me. Show me in the Word of God. Because you see, somewhere in that, we must realize that I am the one that's going to have to live with Him, not God. God doesn't. Can God change Him? You bet. But you see, what we call standards... Let me ask you something. You ever read about the prophet in the Old Testament? Where God told him to go marry a harlot? And live with her? And then when she left him, raised up a couple of kids without him, God said, take her back? Wow, that wouldn't fit our standards, would it? You see, sometimes we need to think about what we're doing. In the midst of this, what the Word of God says is, have faith in God. You see, so often what we must realize is that the same faith... How many are saved? How many are saved here today? Let's raise our hands. Let's commit salvation. All right, good. Same faith that it took to get you saved. Same faith that it takes to get you healed. Or delivered. Or set free. Or prosperity. Or any of the other things that we would like to attach to that. Can I tell you there are not different faiths. There is one faith. The Word of God doesn't say to every man has been given a bunch of different faiths. No! It's what we use that faith for that makes a difference. You see, it's easy for us to believe for salvation because we're saved. But believing for other things sometimes is struggle. Faith for the miraculous. The same faith which brought salvation to you is the same faith which will bring a life of the miraculous to you. Same faith. Same faith. It is the same foundation that we must draw from. It's mindset. Matthew, the 15th chapter. 21st through 28th verse. It says, Then Jesus went thence. This is after, if you read the Word of God, you find out that Jesus, like He always did, ticked off a bunch of Pharisees because of what He was teaching. They got mad. He left. It says, Then Jesus went thence and departed to the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto Him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to me to take the children's bread to cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from the master's table. And Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole that very hour. So this first part of faith for the miraculous is persistent faith. When you think about this woman and, and all that she was going through, think about how many of us would have left somewhere up around verse 24, 25 when he said, I'm, I didn't come to mess with you. Of us have not been how many of us in our own lives when God has not answered when God has not moved in our life when it seems like God has become silent have given up on what we thought was God how many times you know why because so often we can't see his hand can I tell you this is a faith walk and there will be times in your life if you haven't realized it yet that you will not be able to see the hand of God move in your life but when you can't see his hand, you can trust his heart. There's going to be ups and downs. There's going to be stress and strain in our lives. Let me tell you something. We are planted in the middle of an unrighteous, unholy world. 
And because of that, whether it's natural, spiritual, or emotional, there will be struggles in this life. We have raised a generation that have a victim mentality. And it's always somebody else's fault for what's happening in their life. And it's spread into the church. A victim mentality. My parents were not good to me. My parents beat me. Or my parents did this. Or my job is this. Or my job is that. Or, and the list could go on and on. Can I tell you, life's hard. It is. And you know what? You can't do one thing about what people do to you. The only thing you ever have control over is how you respond. That's it. You can fuss all you want to, but it is your response that shows the character. You can fuss all you want to, but it's your response that shows integrity and faith. You see, it would have been easy for her to turn away in anger and sorrow or pride. But she saw Jesus as the only hope for her daughter. So she would not turn away. Desperation may have brought her to that point, but I can, can I tell you that it was more than desperation. There are things in your life, there are desperations that are going to come to you in your life that is going to bring you to the feet of Jesus, but it is the faith you have in Him that's going to make the difference. Persistent faith. Word of God talks about a judge and a widow woman. And the Word of God says that it was an unrighteous judge. But the little widow woman kept coming over and over and over and over and over. You know what the judge said? If I don't give her what she wants, she is going to drive me nuts. Therefore, I'm going to rule for her. Persistent. How long has it been since we've been persistent? You see, what we do is we go from one move or one blowing or one refreshing, uh, refreshing of the things of God. Can I tell you that there are times of refreshing? There are times when God will move in in a certain place or a certain way and it will bring such a refreshing in your life. But that is not doctrine. It's refreshing. You see, so often we are swayed this way and that way by these refreshings when we are supposed to be here and accept the refreshings of God. Persistent faith. It would have been easy to turn away. How many times have we turned away? How many times have we looked at things in our life and said, you know what, must not be God. Remember when I talked about coming to that place of divine direction? You see, oftentimes we rattle the door and say it must not be God. Can I tell you, it may not be time. It may be God. But it may not be time yet. But you know what? Once we rattle the door and make up in our mind that it's not God, we never go back. Persistent faith. You realize the little woman came from Canaan. You can go back and you can study. Yes, it was a cursed thing, but God redeemed it. You know, uh, the Israelites took it back. Some of them didn't get all killed. They were, they were all set up for extinction. You know, all of those things. You can go through the history if you want to. What it amounts to is this. She knew something about God because she came to Him. Because like the woman with the issue of blood, she didn't have any other thing. Just Him. And when... The struggle came. And when she cried out and said, think about this a minute, because this happened a lot. Think about Bartimaeus. The Word of God says when Jesus was coming by, Bartimaeus said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus kept walking. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus kept walking. But you know what? People around him, shh. Just like here. 
Jesus didn't respond. Jesus didn't respond to this lady. So much so that the disciples said, hey, send her away. Send her away. You see, somewhere in her life she knew only Jesus would do. I wonder sometimes when we face the obstacles in our life, when we face the trials and the tribulations, when we face those struggles, I wonder sometimes if we give up too soon for the miracle to happen. Persistent faith is different. Faith was not given to you to keep you from the battle. But it does give you the strength to go through the battle. You see, we have come to a place in America where we've decided that if we're having to go through something, we must have sinned. Something must be wrong in my life or I wouldn't be battling this. Let me ask you something. Are you sure about that? Because the more I study the Word of God, the more I find that the world fought against the disciples the closer they got to God. The more they were doing. I'll make a statement to you. The enemy's not going to use a bulldozer to push down a toothpick house. So if you've got a bulldozer coming against you, maybe it's because when the enemy looks at you, he sees more in you than you do. Persistent faith. Isaiah, the 43rd chapter says, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When, when, everybody say when, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers they shall not overflow thee, and when thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. It didn't say I'm going to keep you out of those things. It said I'm going to keep you through those things. You, we pray so often, God get me out. Let me tell you something, it's not the out you need to get out. It's through you need to happen. Yeah. See what we've done in our life is we've created this uh, facade that if I'm going to be holy and I'm going to be righteous and I'm going to do the things of God, I'm not going to have to suffer. That's what's being taught. Oh, and I believe it, name it, claim it. I believe in those things. I believe in prosperity. I believe. But I also know that when you look at that verse of Scripture, when Peter said, we've given up houses and lands and, 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 and families, what will we get? And Jesus Christ said, hey, you're going to get double for everything you've given up with persecution. It's a word. Oh, the rewards are there. <laughs> but it doesn't come without a fight. The enemy of that world may be a defeated enemy, but we must be the enforcers of that defeat. How do we do that? We talked about it. The only way the darkness becomes greater is when the light dims. But when the light in you begins to shine brighter and brighter and brighter, then the darkness gets less and less and less. And you know what? It's not about whether we stand on the street corner and preach. It's about whether our light shines. It's something that is that simple. When you look at these verses of Scripture, think about this. Word of God says, I created thee, O Jacob, but I formed thee, O Israel. Can I tell you what that word formed means? It means mashed into a mold with pressure. So think about that a minute. God said, I created you, O Jacob, but I mashed you into a mold, O Israel. Same person. I can take you to the verses of Scripture that says Jacob was weakened on the bed. But when his sons came in, when that lost son with those two children that Jacob was going to bless, the Word of God doesn't say Jacob got up. It said Israel arose. You see, somewhere in our life, 
there's going to be a mashing. It's just whether you've got the faith to go through it. You see, somewhere we've decided that failure is a possibility. We did a whole series on we cannot fail. The only way you can fail is decide to fail. That's it. Do you realize that? The only time you fail is when you decide to fail. That's it. It's not complicated. It's not all drawn out. It's a matter of integrity. It's a matter of making up your mind. It's a matter of being determined in your life. Persistent faith of this lame, nameless mother brought her to the point, brought, into, brought her to the point of breaking custom, because she wasn't a Jew, pushing through and even humbling herself. Let me ask you something. If they said, hey, you're just a dog and I ain't got time to mess with you, what would you do? Because that's what he did. That's what he did. But you know what? She was persistent. Enough. Desperation may have brought her to Jesus. Fear for the life of her daughter may have driven her to her knees. But somewhere it changed from desperation to inspiration. And she said, He is my only hope. When the, little, when the woman with the issue of blood came, her one thought was, if I touch but the hem of his garment. Persistent faith. The persistent faith, faith of this mother caused a healing to happen out of time. Let me talk to you a minute about the power of persistent faith. She was not a Jew. Jesus wasn't sent to her. He was sent. Even when he sent out the disciples, what did he say? Only go to the house of Israel. When he sent out those by two by two and said, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, preach the kingdom, what he said was, only go to the house of Israel. Now think about this for just a minute. Because you see, sometimes we don't understand how powerful faith really is. But her faith moved her from a place that he was, Jesus was not allowed to touch her. To a place where Jesus said, all right, whatever you want. That's what's going to happen. You see, if, we're, if we really understood what God is doing, what He's doing is asking us to have enough faith to walk in realms we're not supposed to walk in and do things we're not supposed to be able to do. He's asking us to step into a place that we've not been to yet and do something we've not done by persistent faith. Think about that for just a, little, just a moment. The only time, mm, the only time Jesus healed outside of the house of Israel during his life was only two or three times. And it was only when the person he was dealing with was a person of faith. Think about the centurion, the Roman that came to him and said, My servant lieth sick in bed. Jesus said, mm, I see your faith. I'll get up. I'll go. The man said, Don't go. Just speak the word. Because I know if you'll just speak the word, it's going to happen. He wasn't an Israelite. He was a Roman, a centurion. But his faith crossed the line. What is it that you feel like you can't do? That maybe it's just faith that crosses the line. You see, we look at the world around us. We look at our children. We look at our finances. We look at the stuff we're going through. We look at job situations or body, our bodies that need healing. We look at those things and we draw that line that says, I guess I can't. Persistent faith. 
You see, that mother had looked too many times in the face of that daughter and said, something's got to change. So today I'm going to believe. We think it's a hard thing. Somewhere, we, somewhere we, we've been taught that faith is a struggle. Faith is a hard thing. Faith is, you know, we've been given faith. Do you realize that? All the faith you need, and I know because I used to say, oh, well, you've got to do this and you've got to do that. And you've got, let me tell you something. You can't back that up by the word of God. You've been given faith. It's whether you use it or not that matters. We've all been given a measure of faith. All of us. It's just whether we use it or not. Now, I will agree with you, there is a gift of faith that's different. It is miraculous faith. It is a faith that's beyond. That's a gift of faith. I know that it's out there. But you know what? I'm talking about the everyday Christian that says, I can't. Why can't you? all boils down what you believe so persistent faith you see in I believe in just a couple of months things are going to shift I will tell you prophetically that Hmm. that we have yet to see the things that are going to happen in this year. And I have seen a lot in my life. I've seen God cast out the devils. I've seen, I, I've seen hear miracles and healings. So when God begins to speak to me like that, I go, hmm. Because you know what? What if that happens? What if we dare to believe? Persistent. Persistent. 